what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. This is the Black Ink Crew Chicago. Yes, Black Ink Crew Chicago Review, <laughs> Season 5, Episode 12, Ryantology. Um, this episode, this review ain't going to be long at all, y'all, because it wasn't even a whole lot to the show. But um, before we get into it, please remember to subscribe to my channel. Hit the thumbs up. Let me know if you like this. And hit the notification button so that way you will know whenever I upload my new content. But moving right along, getting into this review. So, um, it starts off there in the new nine mag. Ryan is with his new team. Of course, everybody up in that motherfucker working like they supposed to be doing. It's actually motherfuckers in there working, doing tattoos with, with, with shit to do up in there. They ain't just sitting around smoking weed, shooting the shit. You know what I'm saying? Lily come bring her ass up in there thinking she finna talk to Ryan one-on-one. -on -one, and she finna basically uh, smooth talk him into getting her job back. But... Oh, no, bitch. Ryan stopped your ass at the motherfucking door. Ryan was like, look here. With this new nine mag that I got, we start having a round table interviews, bitch. So what we gonna do, we gonna sit your ass in the hot seat and we all finna ask you some questions. And um, if you can get through this interview process, then we will let you know whether or not you will be welcome into this new nine mag family. She really wasn't feeling it, but the bitch really ain't had no choice, right? So she sits down and so she starts talking about basically making up an excuse you know what i'm saying she was like well when you're in a place where it's just a bad environment and it's negative people and that brings out the worst in people and i was just around a lot of negative people and yada 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 basically she starts blaming everybody else for her going off and her swinging on people when no bitch you went off and you swung on people because your ass is crazy that's just what the fuck you do you like to fight and that's just what the fuck it is so one of the tattoo artists even calls her ass out on that he was like so from what I hear is you basically blaming everybody else, but I have yet to hear you say what your part is in a lot of the bullshit that's been happening and what's been going on. So she was like, well, no, I admit that, you know, I have my thoughts and my wrongs and blah, 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 blah. But ultimately the bitch wasn't, she, she was just basically trying to smooth talk, trying to get her ass back in the damn shop. So, you know, Ryan says that, you know, we'll let you know, we got to sit around and we'll talk and we'll let you know. So of course she leaves. They all sitting around and talking. Half of them are are okay and they willing to give her a chance the other half is like oh hell to the now because we done seen episodes before with this bitch and we know she likes to fight so mm, i don't know about that some of them really wasn't even feeling her you know what i'm saying but ultimately the decision is up to ryan ryan says oh i'll think about it he goes off whatever he does to think about it and so we'll see what his decision is from that but ryan don't be fucking stupid you know lily you know Lily. You know Lily likes to fight. She likes to drink. She likes to drink and fight. She likes to fight and drink. So that's a liability off the rip. So you make sure you that bitch sign a contract. Charmaine and Ryan are in a hot tub. And let me tell y'all, Charmaine is thicker than a snooker. She got her ass done. And then she gained weight on top of having her ass done. So when she's pink, pink, pink. Pa, 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 Boosh. I mean, she she got it coming out everywhere. I ain't mad at you, though, Charmaine, girl. Live your best busty life, girl, okay? But um, they in the hot tub. She tells Neek that her parents are coming. And, of course, really the only thing that they worried about, because, you know, her parents, they old school. They've been married for 30-plus years, and they want her to get married. They don't believe in all that shacking up bullshit. But Neek, Neek, listen to me, Neek. Get married or... Propose to that girl because that's what you want to do, not because that's what her family is pressuring you to do, or because that's what she is pressuring you to do. I'm telling you, it's okay to live in sin for a little while. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Move right along from that. Lord, back over here at the hood, nine mag, the gorilla goons are in the motherfucking building. And the gorilla goons are doing what the fuck they do, being gorillas. Charmaine come in the shop. Everybody complaining about how nasty the shop is, but ain't nobody getting off their goddamn ass to clean up the motherfucking shit. So I say, if you ain't gonna do shit about it, shut the hell up. That's all I'm saying, though. But Charmaine comes in. She complaining about the shop being dirty. Everybody complaining about the motherfucking shop being dirty. But again, ain't nobody finna clean up shit, so shut the hell up. 
So these two little white girls come in the shop, right? They looking for Sean. Now, Sean is the white guy, the little zombie wannabe or whatever. He was on, like, the last two last episodes of the last season. But when they got to that fight in Vegas, he was like, oh, I'm finna have to chuck y'all hoes deuces. Y'all, y'all too. I, I want to be black, but not that kind of black. So he had to chunk these hoes of deuces. So anyways, the girls are in the shop looking for Sean, right? So the gorilla goons proceed to tell her, look, look, ain't no motherfucking Sean here. But it's some of us here that actually do tattoos, which they it's a fucking lie. It's only one nigga that do taco. And I think that nigga name is Taco Meat, uh, Fish Tacos, or t t Beef Tacos, something, something with tacos. But he's the only one out of all the 5100 Gorilla Goons, he the only one that actually does tattoos, right? So, he shows her, um, his, and, oh gosh, that's another thing. When these hoes came through the door, these niggas were on their ass like hound dogs. They were like, oh damn, say what up? What y'all looking for? That's why folks is scared of black men now, because y'all just do too much sometimes. Not all of you. Not none. That's not what I'm saying. But a lot of Negroes, y'all do too fucking much. And you make niggas nervous. I'd have been nervous, too. I'd have been like, oh, what my purse? Click, click, did I lock my door? Oh, Lord, these niggas is wilding around here. But anyways, um, he starts to show her some art off of his phone. He's like, look, you know, I ain't shine, but I'm better than shine. This is what I can do, yada, 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 right? So the girl is like, well, you know what? This is good, but it's not really shine's work. So, uh, Steak Tacos, that's a nigga name. Steak Taco gets mad. He's like, look, man, stop telling me about this nigga Shine. I don't give a fuck about this nigga Shine. That's all. And white girls, they, the white girls like, oh, oh, my God, um, I think we need to go. Um, I, I think we need to go. And hit the gorilla goons in the back. It's like, so what, you gonna get the tattoo or what, man? You gonna get the tattoo or what, man? You gonna get it or what? Hell no, I ain't finna get, excuse me, wait a goddamn minute. You're not finna get aggressive with me and ask me, do I want you to ink up my motherfucking body? You're not finna get my body, much less my time or my goddamn money. No, sir. So then they start talking shit to the girls as they leaving. Well, y'all, go on in, get the fuck out of here. Bye, bye. Charmaine is like, whoa, wait, y'all. I think we can work this out. Wait, hold on. By then, the white girls was already fucking shook. They were like, oh, no, no, no. We ain't come here for this goddamn nigga shit here. No, no. We finna get the fuck out of here, and we finna go find us a nice little friendly white shop where we can go to where y'all ain't finna be doing all this crazy shit up in here. I the fucking left, too. What the fuck? No. So then Charmaine tries to go and tell Van, look, your boys is out here. <laughs> Niggas is running wild out here. They scaring off the, the customers. Like, what, what the fuck? You need to do something about this. He like, look here. I run my shop the way I want to run my motherfucking shop. If you don't like it, then you can fucking move around. What? She trying to tell you how to help your fucking business. Yeah, she did kind of. I mean, I don't even really think she overstepped her boundaries. All she said to him was like, look, maybe I can help you. I can take charge of some things, help you out with some things. He going to say to her, then you take shit over some shit for Ryan. Nah, that's what was his problem. That's why shit was the way it was with Ryan. No, bitch. She trying to help your big scoop ball, meatball, cue ball head ass because your business ain't going right. You got the gorilla goons out here running wild, man. Running wild. Four is in the studio, and he um, is working on his little music, his little thing thing or whatever that he's doing. So one of the, and this nigga had a puppet with him. Like a, a ventriloquism, whatever you call A puppet though, nigga. Come on, four, come on, four. That ain't you, bro. Don't, don't, don't do that shit, bro. But one of the ladies from the um, shot, the shot, Chicago Sky, the WNBA team, she comes there and she um, gives for, well, she asks for if he um, would change, basically change the lyrics to his song, Shot Town. That was a big hit. I heard that song. Shout out to Ford. That song, that song jammed like a motherfucker. I ain't even from Shot Town, but Shot Town, that motherfucker jam. But um, basically, they want to use his song as their little theme song or whatever for the Chicago Sky, but they want him to change it from Shot Town to Sky Town, basically. Basically. And so he's kind of like, mm, mm, he's kind of hesitant about that because what he's saying is basically, you know, he knows music and he knows how motherfuckers can be grimy and how they can be fucking sneaky. 
he doesn't want to give them the rights or basically change up his song to be something that they want it to be because he could potentially lose rights to his song. They could take that, they could flip that shit and leave his ass out in the motherfucking dust. And he wouldn't get nothing. He wouldn't get nothing potentially, but he wants to basically avoid getting all that done. So he's kind of like, well, you know, I'll think on it. I'll work out some things and I'll get back to you. I'll let you know what I can do before Take my advice. If them motherfuckers is offering you something, get some money, get a contract, get some rights to some shit so them motherfuckers won't goddamn TLC your goddamn ass. You seen that shit? Mm-mm. Watch Lily meets up with her mom. Mm, it was kind of boring. But, I mean, it was good because I could brush up on my Spanish. I could, I could I understand what they were saying. Basically, she was telling her mom how she got into it with everybody at the shop. Don't nobody at the shop like her ass. Her mom was telling her, bitch, I'm not stupid. You always fighting somebody. So stop using your fists and start using your words, and maybe people will fucking like you. So she still is unclear about her interview over at Ryan's shop. She's still waiting on that. Yada, yada, yada. It was a cute little scene. Shout out to her mom. Her mom was cute. Back at Hood Mag, um, they ain't got shit over there. They ain't got no ink. They ain't got no toilet paper. They ain't got no customers. It ain't nothing but the gorilla goons there. All the motherfucking gorilla goons. And um, they complaining about it, but even Dawn is over there like, what the fuck, Van? You you supposed to be running this thing, bruh. But, but it's, it's hood than a motherfucker over there. It's hood as hell. So, what's her name? Gina and the other girl. I can't think of that goddamn girl name. They come over there because they claim they're doing inventory. Really, them hoes was coming over there so they could be nosy, so they could see what the fuck is going on over there. So, of course, they go over there, the gorilla goons, like the pit bulls they are. They start going in on they ass. What the fuck you doing over here? What the hell you doing? What the fuck are you doing there? You don't tattoo... You, you don't do nothing. Smoke weed, drink, eat spaghetti, and look at strippers. Y'all don't, y'all niggas don't do nothing. But anyway, Charmaine and Don proceed to basically complain to Gina and old girl like they finna do something about it. And they even asking him, well, who was your head manager? You tell your head manager if you ain't got what the fuck you need. I can't do shit about that. That's why Ryan left Van in charge. You go holler at Van, your fucking manager. Moore is back at his place, and he's working on the, the Chi-Town remix song that he's going to do for him, right? So apparently, they actually sent him some lyrics, what they want him to say. Show you right there, these motherfuckers is being shady. They already sent you lyrics that they want you to do on your own damn song, but they want you to change your shit. Mm-mm. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. He's his homeboy come over and his homeboy is telling him like well basically he's you know singing the lyrics or whatever rapping the lyrics to his homeboys and they can't even keep a straight face about the shit uh, it was cheesy as hell it was cheesy as hell it was dumb as hell the lyrics sounded whack as hell nah for and I don't blame for it. for it's like look here I'm gonna need you I, maybe that was his manager or something because he was telling him like I'm gonna need you to holler at them let them know. Thanks, but no thanks. I'm going to have to go ahead and pass up on that offer. I'm going to have to be true to me, true to myself. I can't do the shit. And I don't blame him because it was whack, you know. And then, like I said, these motherfuckers is already sending you lyrics on how to, what they want you to say on your song. The fuck? Lily and Latifah meet up at Lily's place to drink. Like these hoes need any more motherfucking liquor. Lily tells Latifah, <laughs> a.k.a. Bella, about her interview uh, that she had over at Ryan's shop and how she had to do a panel interview basically with everybody and how she didn't like that. She didn't like that because they was basically calling her out on her shit. And she thought it was going to be easy. She thought she was going to be able to shoot shit to Ryan and that Ryan was just going to let her back in. Nuh uh, boo boo, no, no, wee wee, stop, stop. Yeah, didn't happen like that. So, even Bella's like, well, well, what did he do all of that for? Well, why did he do that? And she can't pay her bills because she still ain't got no damn job. The both of they ass together, they a fucking mess. So, um, what's that girl name? Bella Latifah tells Lily that she wants her to give her a tattoo. Lily's like, well, I got my shitty ass equipment here. I can give you a tattoo. And she was like, yeah, I just want something about my daughter and blah, blah, blah. She gives her this tattoo on her wrist of these elephants, right? Now, it was a cute tattoo. I'll give you that. But, did Lily sterilize that shit? Did you see her open some new equipment? Do you know if that shit is clean or not? Bitch, that's how you get hepatitis. I work around that. You, that's how you get hep C and hep B and hep all them alphabets. Don't, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. If I had to guess, I don't know if Lily sterilized that shit, but you know Bella's so, 
you know, her crayon box is not all the way full with the crayons. Um, so I'm sure she was probably like, girl, wash this shit up on the seat. I'm sure if you put it in some bleach, it'd be straight. Girl, hook me up with some elephants on my wrist. So Lily did the uh, little elephants on her wrist, girl, and she was just so dramatic. Oh my gosh, she was just doing, she started crying. Girl, I can't. Moving on. So Charmaine and Nick are having dinner with Charmaine's parents. They couldn't even get in and sit down good for Charmaine. Mom and Daddy was basically going in on, okay, so what's going on with this? Y'all shacking up. Y'all going to get married. What the fuck is y'all going to do? But what, well, wait, Charmaine Mama is a typical fucking black mama. Soon as she seen her, she went in on her weight. She telling the girl, I mean, she didn't straight out say she fat, but she she made those in you like a mama. I love my grandma. I love my Jessie Mae Black. I do, but that's what my grandma used to do. Ooh, ham. You sure is getting big. Ooh, ham. Hence, ham bone. <laughs> that's me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, they're going in like, are you going to marry her? What, 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 what is in the future? What do you got going on? What's going to happen? Yada, yada, yada. So, Nick is like, well, I really can't ask you this in front of your daughter. Like, I mean, I really can't answer this in front of your daughter. Like, you don't know what I have planned and your yada, 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 yada. So, um... What you call it, um... Charmaine and her mama end up going off to the bathroom. And that's when Nick does, um, ask Charmaine's hand in marriage from her dad and of course her dad is like hell yeah i need somebody to marry this crazy bitch <laughs> i know that's what he wanted to say <laughs> please somebody take this crazy loud bitch <laughs> but anyway that was cute he asked her her dad's hand in marriage and her dad was like really excited about that i thought that was super super cute but moving on from that Girl, so Gina and Homegirl end up talking to Ryan about what they talked about, Char well, what they talked to Charmaine and Don about, about the shop not having shit over there. And Ryan is like, look, y'all seen when I did the grand opening to, not to the new 9 Mag, that shit over there belongs to Van. So if they having any issues, they need to holler at Van about that shit. Van run that shit the way he want to goddamn run that shit. And this is my motherfucking shop. This is the only thing that I need to be fucking worried about. I don't know why the hell they thought Ryan was going to do something about that shit any goddamn way. Come on now, for real. I don't give a fuck. Back over here at the hood, now, Mag. Lord, Lord, Lord. The front fucking, the front door is broke, right? But these niggas got the broke sign on the inside of the fucking door. They don't even have it on the outside of the motherfucking door. So Charmaine beating on the door, talking about it's cold. Let me in. They trying to tell the bitch that the door is is fucking broke. How the fuck you ain't got no heat? The door broke. No ink. No toilet paper, no customers. What are y'all doing in that bitch? On Groupon? Are you snapping all day? Are you snacking all day? Are you smoking weed all day? What the fuck are you even fucking doing up in there? That don't make no goddamn sense. So, but then, girl, Ben don't give a fuck. Ben, like, look here, we gonna have somebody come in here later on to fix on the door. Ben don't give a fuck. That's why that goddamn shop is gonna close down. Because Ben don't give a fuck. Basically. Um, so in walks Lily. She came in with her little bad belt ass with her Fucci set out on. It wasn't even Gucci, it was Fucci girl. It wasn't even Versace, it was Fosace. <laughs> she had her Fosace outfit on with her shoes linked to the side just a little bit. And she came up in there basically to let them know she came up in there to get her shit because she is now going over to work at the new nine mag. Turns out Ryan either got a check coming or he really feeling sorry for that bitch because he's letting her ass work over there at the new nine mag all three charmaine don and ben were like what the fuck what are you fucking serious the only reason why she came over there basically was to talk shit she was like well looks like ron don't need y'all um he basically kept everybody over there that he wanted and everybody that he didn't want to fuck with. Um, he just left y'all ass over here. So, um, good luck at this motherfucking shop. Deuces. I'm out. I ain't finna be over here no more. Good luck with that shit. And you can tell, Van was getting very hot. Van was very fucking heated right before the episode went off. 
it was banned in his green screen. And one of the producers asked him, do you really feel like that's true? Do you think that Ryan just took the people that he wanted to his new shop and everybody else he just threw away to the side? Do you really think that? Van kind of was like, mm, you can tell him, like, bitch, don't ask me that shit. Don't ask me. Mm. But that was the end of the episode right there, y'all. I told you, it wasn't a whole lot to the episode. Mm, it was kind of boring, but hopefully I made it as entertaining as possible as I could for you all. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share this video. Subscribe to my channel and let me know what you guys think. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.